right, welcome folks. Mill Spec Ops Monkey here. This is going to be your sit rep. It is Wednesday, 6 22 It's 11 a.m. Central Time, coming to you from the great state of Texas. And without further ado, let's hop over here to our board. Uh, we're going to kick it off, as always, in Skyglass. Remember, if you want to get this app, uh, it's actually, you just go download it on your computer. It's about five bucks a month, but I'm going to show you. This thing is unmatched. There's no other app out there that can do what this one can do. And I am stoked on just the stuff that we find every single day. So uh, today we're kicking off, just show you what we got going on electronic suite wise. Uh, you're going to notice we've got a E3 Century. That's going to be one of your AWACS. That's uh, uh, the aircraft that usually, typically, it's working air traffic control for military aircraft that are airborne. Uh, kind of in that region, but when you see them start to do that tight uh, little circle, uh, then you know they're doing man in the middle grabs most likely. So, got an E6 up. That's going to be a Takamo. That stands for take charge and move out. That is your um, command center. Uh, here, just get a little bigger picture so you can see what it looks like. It's a white bird. It's got a couple domes on it, uh, dog houses as we call them, but they are. Uh, Basically communicating with the ICBMs uh, on submarines, on you know missile silos throughout the U.S. It's basically an airborne command center, uh, and we see those up quite frequently. They're kind of like uh, looking glass, or which will be these R-135s, similar in nature, um, but really closely aligned to the 747 that we watch called Night Watch, which is, uh, that's the doomsday bird, okay? So speaking of R-135s and looking glass, you can see we've got a couple up. This one, Maverick 01, uh, is out uh, in that general South Dakota, Nebraska region. And uh, let me see here, my sky blast is actually thinking, probably because I've got refresh turned on. So. Uh, then we got this Shiner looking like it's headed southbound. Let's see if it runs routes right here. Uh, in the past, this one has come down. It's either running routes here right along that Gulf Coast, or it actually drives all the way down here. It <laughs> drives, uh, flies all the way down into Central and South America and runs across here in the Caribbean and gathers data, uh, usually because we've got uh, either the, the Russians or the Chinese down in that region. So... All right, a couple uh, C2s. These are the smaller Navy variants of the AWACS. Uh, basically, same kind of thing. Got a little dome on it, spins around, does uh, air traffic control for uh, some Navy birds. That one's out over Jacksonville. Got another one up here off the coast of North Carolina. And then uh, we do have, if I can get eyes on it, uh, you will see that is Air Force One up right here in the background. Uh, of course, it is... Uh, Flashbang is not going anywhere today, so it doesn't appear anything on this calendar. So it looks like they're just out flying around. But okay, just to keep it kind of interesting. And then here's another R-135 coming inbound from across the drink. All right, over to our watch list from about thirty about thirty minutes ago. To show you what we have up now. This is uh, you're going to notice some of these blue aircraft that are going on. Here, that's going to be a PC-12, uh, and that one is, is actually uh, Department of Homeland Security running some routes along the border there. That's uh, doing man-in-the-middle technology kind of stuff. Uh, and then, of course, we've got a handful of uh, other ones that are, uh, this one, for example, is National uh, the Nuclear Energy. So that's kind of like your Department of uh, Energy, just like our sniffer. Uh, but a different aircraft out flying around. And then we've got a couple P-8s there in the Jacksonville area right off of uh, Cape Canaveral up to Jacksonville doing their deal, as well as other, uh, the blue ones again. On well, this particular blue one, uh, that is our sniffer. We're going to look closer at that one here in just a minute. But the 545 PA, that's going to be one of your Phoenix Air Birds, uh, the Gray Birds as we like to call it, uh, that we're watching. And then let's get over here to the EU. You can see... We are running routes. There's that killing, uh, Kalingrad. Pay attention to that one. This is going to be a game changer. But you notice we're running right up along that region and then right along the uh, borderline of Ukraine. Uh, and then down, that is going to be that Brio 68. We haven't seen that one in a little while, but that's, again, another spy craft. Looks to be headed out over that Constanta area. And then there's one of our E3s. Now that I thought for a minute there, it looked like it was doing a little bit of that man in the middle uh, grab, but it uh, looks like it broke out of that and is just flying around that region over Bordeaux, France. So, okay. 
There is our watch list. Now let's get into our heavies. Kind of a light day in Europe. Just to show you, we've got stuff going on up in Denmark, all the way down south. Uh, of course, the Constanta piece of the house. And uh, down into Cairo, into Egypt, in that general area. We seem to be putting a lot of boots on the ground in that one. So it uh, looks like something over Doha, and then out here over Portugal, too, which seems to be uh, a little more of an uptick in that general region. All right, now let's get over to the air refuelers. Actually, let me back that up on the heavy lifts. I do want to show you, let me fast forward through that. The U.S., all right, <laughs> kind of launched early there. Um, East Coast centric, as always, right back to what they were doing. Notice it runs all the way from Florida up to about D.C., and this is, uh, most of those are C-130s, not the, the heavy lifts. There are one or two C-17s. Actually, the one C-17 I see in that picture was actually a UK bird. So, uh, but you can see a lot of C-130s, not seeing too many C-17s in that respect. All right, now over to the rare refuelers. Again, kind of mimicking what our, our uh, heavy lifts are doing. East Coast centric. Notice we got that little launch right there out over kind of Detroit, Michigan area. Minnesota, and then right there in the center of the U.S., coming out of Kansas. And then we get across here. You can see East Coast is just lit up. Lots and lots of uh, traffic for air refuelers, which means we've got a lot of fighters up on the East Coast in that general region. Now we get over to Europe, you're going to see, uh, notice, uh, we've got a fresh launch out of the U.K. That, right over there, Kalingrad. Again, running fighters up over that particular region. I'm going to show you one of the NOTAMs and the TFRs in that general region kind of match up with that. And then, of course, Constanta. So it looks like we've got two ports right now that we are, we are providing air cover or what they would call combat air patrol uh, from a U.S. perspective, and that is going to be that Kalingrad and then Constanta. Again, Kalingrad is going to be what makes this place go hot, I believe. So, all right. Now let's talk a little bit about, uh, let's see, we're going to go into the Russian map. I just want to show you where we stand today now this is actually coming out of germany uh their uh defense intelligence uh group now you'll notice uh the red is where we have some active uh war zone going on there but the the strikes are throughout all the way coast to coast uh and then notice too they call out where the nuclear plants power plants are within the within the region so uh, don't want to hit one of those if we can help it because that would uh, not be a good thing we already know chernobyl doesn't have a good track history so uh, but that just kind of gives you uh, just an overlay and synopsis of, of really where things are stacking up right now now speaking of this day in history let's get over uh, i do want to show you this is uh on june 22nd 1941 this is when uh, uh the nazis decided to go after Russia uh, in Operation Barbarossa, and uh, they actually uh, turned their back. They, they had an agreement uh, in play, and Hitler decided, uh, you know what, I don't really care about agreements, went back on his word, and then they basically went after the Soviet Union starting on this day. Again, Operation Bar Barbarossa changed the whole dynamics of World War II. Uh, but then again, also, the other piece I wanted to tell you, I get asked this question, and I didn't know the answer to it, I'll be honest with you. Uh, but what does MIG stand for? And evidently, it's the first, or sorry, it's the last name of the two guys that developed uh, this company and these, these aircraft, uh, Mikoyan and Gurevic. And these guys, the eye in the center there, that little funky looking eye, is uh, the Russian symbol for and. So it's really M and G, but they get the nomen, or they get the the call out of a MIG uh, because they are the primary manufacturers of everything in uh, aircraft wise for um, the military there. So uh, that's where that MIG call out comes from. Okay. All right. So again, uh, the history, the Barbarossa, Operation Barbarossa, we can just kind of go back and look at World War II historically, and we tend to repeat many uh, aspects of the war. In this case, instead of Germany being the ones making all the moves, it looks like Russia is now the new Germany, so to speak. Uh, but again, uh, if you forget your history, you're bound to repeat it. So we have to pay attention to what, what happened and, uh, and how things shook loose because uh, it is uh, definitely repeating itself. So 
Okay, let's get over here to the live tracker. I do want to show you, I'm not going to show you volcanic stuff today. I'm going to go over the aircraft. We've got Forte 11 that is up currently over the Black Sea. Again, this is one of your RQ-4 Global Hawk drones. It's a Northrop Grumman bird. Uh, U.S. Air Force uh, running out of down here in, uh, I guess, the, the toe area of, <laughs> of Italy. Uh, but notice it came right on through. It skipped over, which I find very interesting, the Turkish border. This is Turkey, okay? Uh, the fact that it just kind of flew and went a little north and then hooked back down goes to kind of tell you uh, they clearly don't have uh, permission to fly over Turkey with their drone. <laughs> and so they're avoiding that area. Again, Istanbul is a major port, uh, or not port, uh, it's a major port, but it's actually a, uh, an access uh, point. Um, for everything getting in and out of the Black Sea. So to watch this run this route, it, they are actually looking all the way in easily with Crimea all the way down in probably to Ankara from that spot, grabbing everything they can data-wise on the region uh, and more than likely just protecting. This is probably grabbing intelligence to protect this port of Constanta. Okay, let me back that one out, see if we've got anything else in the region. Uh, just a giant Antonov, it looks like, flying right now. So uh, that is the 224th Flight Unit State Airline. Okay. Uh, I don't know that we caught that one with the Ruskies. We'll have to look at our flight pattern and see if, if we caught anything on our map. Uh, but it looks like he is flying right up here to the border of Ukraine uh, right now. So anyway. We back out of that. It's interesting looking aircraft, and I said Antonov, but I don't know. I may be wrong on that one, so not familiar with that. Okay, let me close that out. Let's get over here to Flashbang schedule today. As you're going to see, nothing really on there. Of course, the one item at 2 o'clock I find very interesting, and that is the fact that uh, <laughs> Mr. Magoo is actually going to come out and talk about gas prices and Putin's price hike. Uh, of course, this is, uh, uh, he's just shifting blame uh, instead of saying, hey, I'm, I'm accountable for this. And I basically uh, host ourselves with our sanctions uh, on gas pricing. Uh, he's going to blame it on Putin uh, as the bad guy, but we all know the real score here, right? So, all right, so we'll get away from Mr. Magoo. Let's get over to our uh, NOTAMs. Now, this is a new one. Keep in mind, this is uh, Kalingrad right here. This is that port that we bring stuff, or they bring stuff through. Uh, I don't know why I said we. Um, but there was an agreement that was put into place after World War II that allowed uh, the Russians to basically utilize this port uh, as a sovereign territory. And they basically tra uh, rail stuff right through here uh, in through Belarus over to the uh, Russian border. It's... Uh, Cutting that off is, is not good. It's kind of a bad, bad thing for the Russians. And, of course, they're going to probably come back in spades against uh, Lithuania for what they did. So, uh, But just to show you, we do have new NOTAMs up as of June 20th uh, through the 25th for that one. And then June 20th through 25th here. Looks like they are patrolling or doing something in that general region um, aircraft-wise. All right. Again, most of what you see on this map, 99% of it is going to be tied to some type of either military operation or exercise. As you can see, there is a just general blanket over the Ukraine. Uh, again, this is the area that I'm watching. This is our watch area just north and then up here in this general region uh, because this is Belarus, which is pro-Russian. Uh, and they are basically, I think, about to make a run on this north side here in the coming weeks. Uh, <laughs> as well as if they didn't just change here. Uh, the one thing I will say is that uh, when Lithuania did what they did, uh, it probably took Poland right out of their uh, sights and focused everything on Lithuania for their next target uh, in terms of uh, the Russians going after somebody. So definitely think Poland is in the crosshairs, but uh, Lithuania just made the short list. So, okay. Now we back away from this. Uh, again, we are watching Syria. We're watching uh, Israel. Uh, they just announced, again, if you didn't catch it, uh, I was on with James Kadish yesterday when we talked about it. Uh, but they're going for election number five in two years. And there is a high probability they believe that Netanyahu is going to get 
pull back into office out of this with the majority. So uh, the U.S. now, we did uh, get some confirmation of sorts of what's going on here uh, relative to troops. In the Kansas area, there is an operation uh, called Gunslinger 22. It is not on the TFR or NOTAM board yet, but I will show you we have nearly 1,000 U.S. Marines on a joint exercise uh, in Salina, Kansas. And it uh, looks like uh, they were getting pumped full of food here. But uh, this is kind of an interesting. During the exercise, the Marines are performing a broad range of military operations, including helicopter, fixed wing, and, and fixed wing operations, controlling of aircraft, and aviation ground support. That uh, looks like that is what they're going to be up to. Uh, again, if you look at the general area on that, on that, I mean, they've got a an ongoing military military exercise, NOTAM and TFR in play for that almost the whole state right there, and that's been in place since January one. So that gunslinger operation could actually just kind of fall in underneath that same umbrella. So we'll continue to watch it, as always. I don't see any uh, VIP NOTAMs going on at the moment. We do have this exercise supposed to wrap up by July 1, all the way up the coast. And uh, again, if you look at the U.S., that is pretty active in terms of military exercises and operations. So continue to keep our eyes on it and uh, the things that are moving around uh, that we're all seeing. Definitely making us nervous. So, okay. Move on over from the NOTAMs, and let's talk a little bit about, we talked about uh, the Marines there in Kansas. Uh, this I did want to show you, uh, U.S., I don't know if you, if you caught wind of this one, but evidently we had a little bit of a dispute out uh, with Iran uh, as they continue to prep new centrifuges, but uh, evidently this little fast boat uh, came rolling up on our Navy, and uh, of course we, we, we shot a, a beautiful red flare out over them to warn them rather than some fire shots. Uh, this is why nobody takes us seriously. We should have just sank their boat and they know not to mess with us. Uh, but in any case, uh, it's the new world we live in, isn't it? Okay, now, if this doesn't get things going, check this out. A Russian oil refinery near the Ukraine border basically was hit by not just one drone attack, but two drone attacks catching it on fire, that right there will send prices skyrocketing. Anytime you take an oil refinery offline, uh, it's going to basically be a cost driver uh, throughout the region. And so we're probably going to see a pretty big uptick because this thing will be offline probably for a while uh, as they go and try and get it repaired. But it also shows that Ukraine is actually going on the offensive along the border and taking out strategic assets that are there by the Russians utilizing either our equipment or Germany's equipment uh, or the UK's equipment. So uh, either way, folks, we're getting sucked into this thing. And if this doesn't cause things to go hot, uh, it is going to be the, um, the port that just got uh, sanctioned uh, on the blockade there and killing, uh, anyway, in the Baltic Sea there. All right. So let's move over here real fast. We're going to look at uh, in 721 AL, this is going to be your DOJ aircraft. I just want to show you, we were talking about this on Monday. Looks like on Tuesday it came back to D.C., but it was out in Idaho Falls. And uh, don't know what they're up to out there, but they did a round robin. That's usually a go team, by the way, uh, on this particular aircraft. So if you haven't seen the aircraft, it's just a little high wing prop job uh, that they uh they fly all over the U.S. with their little go team, as well as down into the Caribbean from time to time. But that's it right there. All right. Let's take a look here at C-202. Last time we were talking, he was actually just starting to exit the U.S. Uh, rolling here. We knew he was headed across the drink. We just didn't know where. Looks like he is now in Paris. So that is going to be your Secretary of Defense and, um, or sorry, Secretary of Homeland Security. Uh, not defense, my bad. Uh, but anyway, this guy has been flying all over the world. We've seen him everywhere from Pakistan, the Middle East, Europe, uh, Asia. He's been around the world basically uh, in the last three weeks. Okay, let's talk marine traffic for a second. Then we're going to cover a few other things. Uh, do want to show you, uh, again, Kaliningrad. That's the word I was looking for earlier when I was talking about the action and activity going on here in the Baltic region. Uh, but 
just notice uh, these boats appear to be kind of avoiding <laughs> this general area. They're kind of sweeping out here. Uh, but let's get over and take a look. I want to show you we're looking at uh, Long Beach and LAX uh, port. And I'll just show you not a lot of movement going on. We did have a, a, a fresh couple boats come in. Uh, nothing really. We've got three boats from Hong Kong. Nothing else from Asia uh, in that port. Uh, that means that their inventories here are starting to deplete if they haven't already been depleted and there's nothing coming in and we're going to be probably for months. Now notice that that track that runs all along the coastline there of China. They're self-supporting them. I mean everything that they're doing they've retooled their manufacturing at least that's what we're hearing from the intelligence side and they are basically feeding themselves. So if you look at this heavy 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 flow of stuff coming out of Shanghai Notice it's rolling right up in here. This is Beijing, the port into Beijing area. Uh, Beijing right there to the left, uh, as you can see. But, yeah, just a constant feeder of stuff coming in and out of that particular, uh, you know, region. So, not coming to the U.S., not going anywhere else, just feeding themselves. Now, this is uh, Colombo. This is the largest port in Sri Lanka. I just want to show you, it is uh, not very busy. Now, remember, they are out of out of uh, oil and fuel, and they're out of food. <laughs> and so uh, it's not a good situation for them, and the fact that their port is not filling up with stuff coming in is very concerning. Now, of course, look at the flow here from Russia. It is just flowing like mad right across the Black Sea, coming through that little pinch point in Istanbul. Uh, Istanbul. And then here in Kaliningrad, just to show you, that is the spot. Remember that treaty that was in play was just broken. And so this, uh, you know, Lithuania is going to be in the crosshairs because of that. All right. Not good. Not good at all. All right. So we'll come back uh, as needed on that one. Let's look at the military aspect in that region. Uh, you will see we've got, kind of get into it. This is uh, Kaliningrad right here. That is going to be a Swedish warship. This looks to be a Lithuanian warship. And these are boats that are in port. All right. Nothing really moving, but these guys are kind of hanging out in the region. Remember, Russia has some pretty big presence in this, in this area right here. Uh, and so if they can't get through that port, that means they got to go all the way up here north of Estonia and come through here near in uh, St. Petersburg to put stuff on trains. So it really is uh, kind of a pain for them because this is kind of centrally located to the region. Okay. Now, if we get down here in the Black Sea, you're going to notice uh, we got a couple things on the move here. Uh, that's a old SB-36. It's going to be the Russians. And this right here is, uh, let me see who that belongs to uh, as we get a closer look. All right, so that's just going to be local assets, military ops right there um, tied to Romania. And then a couple other ones here just around the general region. But that's Constanta. That's one uh, that they are watching closely. Uh, as we see everything going out. Now, the uh, Q4 drone that we're watching is flying right here across the Black Sea, back and forth, all right? And uh, remember, this Odessa is an area they've been attacking. Uh, it'll come back online here pretty soon, I'm sure, as a Russian port. <laughs> but uh, uh, remember, Russia controls Crimea, and this is all Ukraine up here. And uh, we're watching right up here along Belarus. That entire area has got a NOTAM. Uh, that uh, means it's very active in terms of Russian military along that border. Okay. Okay. Now, just as they beat the war drums, Russia says it is ready for the big colossal war with NATO. Uh, just remember, if uh, the U.S. and the U.K. aren't part of this NATO thing, that uh, NATO will lose very quickly because they just do not have the firepower uh, or assets to actually take on somebody like a Russia or a China or the United States for that matter. So uh, very, very key to all of this. Again, if you remember our history, go back to World War II, uh, we kind of stood on the sidelines and watched a lot of this stuff unfold. Uh, but you'll, you can go back and look at pictures of, of our president hanging out with Stalin and uh, uh, you know, all the, all the players that were basically key to uh, World War II and its kickoff. A lot of them were basically thugs. Uh, but it was interesting to see, you know, Churchill and Stalin and Roosevelt all kind of chilling out together. 
uh, as they uh, prepared for World War II. And it was kind of a long, brutal battle in terms of how long the span was of things started uh, like in 1938 all the way to 1945. Uh, it was a pretty long war. So anyway, we're watching this stuff unfold, and it looks like uh, it is just a matter of time. As we look at this, uh, remember I said if NATO ever did this, uh, it would basically, you know, probably kick us off into a war because they would probably get shot down. Uh, but notice here that the Russian military helicopters crossed into NATO territory for two minutes, uh, furthering tensions. Uh, but this is uh, this is what the Hilo was that came in. It's an Mi-8 military helicopter. Now, uh, again, if the U.S. were to penetrate and go across one of the borders, they'd probably get shot at, if not shot down. Okay. Uh, just goes to show you the different mindset and mentality of, of the war footing, right? All right, over here to Biggs, Army Airfield. Not too much going on. We had this flight come in. That was actually a helo. Looks like it was a uh, medical flight. Nothing else really to speak of. These are all just normal flights coming and going out of the airport. Nothing else on the docket. We get over here to Ramstein. A little busier. You can see some arrivals coming in. Uh, from Bobak Air Base, uh, Baltimore, Washington. That's going to be an Atlas Air flight. Uh, everything else, uh, we do have that SPAR 86, which is going to be uh, somebody. It looks like it came in from Paris. And wondering if, eh, no, that's probably not, uh, if it's tied with the C202 that's coming inbound. We'll watch the board and see if he ends up at Ramstein. Uh, but that one's probably a dignitary coming inbound to Ramstein. And uh, looks like they were in Paris originally. So uh, what do we have outbound? Just this one here. Looks like it's headed back to Bobak Air Base. That's down. Uh, if you're not familiar with the region and where that would fall, that is Romania. Uh, as you can see, let me back this up just a tad. You can see that kind of ties right in there. Constanta is right over here. All right. Okay, again, and then this one here, this is actually a Royal Air Force. That's probably going to be troop, uh, troops coming in from the UK into Ramstein. And let's get over here to our Camber flights. Uh, you're going to notice two of them on the board. One is coming out of that location in Turkey. We don't see it on the board, uh, but that, that air base um, is the one that we've been putting troops in and out of. Remember, right on the border of Syria, so that means we've got assets in the region. Could be why uh, or where they're actually supporting things out of between Iraq and this location, uh, all of our uh, activity going on inside of Syria. All right. And then this one here coming out of uh, davis Mothin. That's, uh, that's going to be a 747-400, same as the other one, really. Uh, and it looks to be headed across the drink. So rolling out of here, headed northbound or across uh, eastbound, sorry. All right, and now over to the Brits. Let's see what they are up to. Remember, we had them up here along our border recently, and it uh, looks like we've got one coming out of Central Florida, Cape Canaveral uh, Air Force Station right there, headed westbound, and then this one's just coming in across that, that uh, the old arch there, uh, or arc, sorry, uh, as they, they come across the drink. No telling, that may end up here in either in... Canada or uh, Seattle-Tacoma area. The uh, rest of them look to be, let's see, that looks like it's headed down. Could be headed into the Cairo area as well. Um, we'll see. Who knows where that one's? It could be heading into Cyprus. So, And then these are, are rolling out of Europe back into the UK, it looks like. All right, now from a NATO bird, we've got one that has left Denmark. And uh, don't know where he's headed. Uh, looks like, let me see here. That is, that's headed right into that region um, where the port is uh, that we're having all the big deals with. So let's, we'll continue to watch it. Looks like he's descending at 7,000 feet, 320 uh, miles an hour. Uh, so he's getting ready to land somewhere in this general region. Now the Ruskies. All right, so we were looking at one earlier. I said this, this guy, this is maybe the one we were looking at uh, that was headed southbound. And, uh, of course, that right there is the Black Sea. Looks like he's headed down maybe to Ankara uh, and to Turkey, but he is descending pretty quickly. 
Uh, maybe he's going to do a loop here and land right there uh, on that. But he's still in Russia. This is Crimea, the Black Sea right here. So he could be landing here uh, rather than going into Turkey. And then the other ones, it looks like uh, headed, headed up toward uh, kind of along the border there. Remember, this is Ukraine. This is Belarus. So they could be headed into Belarus from there. Uh, but this is Moscow. And uh, all right. So let's head on over. We looked at that one. Take a quick gander at the Omni flights. Definitely troops rolling out of Fort Worth Alliance headed up here to Seattle. Uh, and from there, it's probably going to either head up into Alaska or it'll go all the way uh, across the drink into Asia Pacific. And our immigration machine. So... This looks like, as I'm looking, I see a handful valley, another valley, uh, El Paso. Uh, that one's headed to Laredo. Two of them headed down to Alexandria, 72-hour holding facility. And then the others look to be headed down south of the border as well, except for this one is headed northbound. Looks like it's coming out of Miami up to, where are we headed here? Kentucky. All right. Let's get back over here. All right, this is going to be our nuke sniffer. We talked about this one a little while ago. Department of Energy, uh, they have a handful of assets in terms of aircraft at, uh, that we track. Uh, but this one landed 26 minutes ago. You can see it just flew out of uh, uh, Camp Springs, which is the uh, Senior Living Center Brown Zone area. Uh, rolled down here to this general area. I don't know where that is. <laughs> Did a little bit of a, a route. Let me see, is that an airport? Yeah, it looks like a runway right there. Uh, just a quick sweep and then left. So you can see the altitude went up, then back down, back up again. Definitely doing some sampling in that general region, but I don't know why. Okay, let's see if there's anything else that we forgot to cover. Uh, if we do just a quick count over here in the uh, old school ADSB exchange, 346, uh, or actually 306, it just updated. And so, all right, so we'll watch that. Now, I don't know if you caught this one or not, but these things always happen in threes. I just wanted to show you this because I thought it was interesting. This is a jetliner erupting in flames at Miami Airport after it crash landed. I guess it had a landing gear uh, that failed to, uh, to go and down and lock. And so uh, they landed, it looks like gear up. Uh, belly landing but uh, but yeah this could have been a lot worse and uh, 126 passengers only three of them were actually treated at the hospital for injuries uh, as you can see some of the pictures here rolling in there's that nice nose cone all damaged up but uh, anyway uh, always happens in threes so watch I guarantee we'll see two more uh, and pray that they are not major all right Okay, one last thing. I always try to do this if I can. I, I went into the board. I want to show you this. Uh, one of the beauties about sky glasses, you get into it. This is a G6 that is owned and operated by, guess who? Bill Gates in Africa. So just so you can see, uh, he is currently on route. That is, uh, I don't know, he's at like 30,000 feet or something, but that is Bill Gates. What's he doing in Africa? I don't know, but that's him on his uh, 80 million plus dollar aircraft. So um, anytime you see him going into Africa, you always have to kind of go, what is this dude up to, right? But again, uh, that database over in Skyglass is insane. Every time I go in, I find somebody. Like I said, in the past, we've had, uh, we watched Tiger Woods in the last sit rep. This one, we got Bill Gates on the move. Uh, but you can go into this database and just data mine stuff all day long uh, and get everybody from Oprah Winfrey to uh, Bezos uh, to Eric Prince, Tiger Woods. I mean, they're, they're all flying these high dollar aircraft and it's, uh, it's kind of cool to just go in and, and be able to find them, add them to your watch list and just track them and see where they go. So again, Bill Gates in Africa probably not a good thing for anybody. All right. All right. Well, listen, that's going to wrap us up for today's sit rep. Uh, don't forget if you are in the chat and you are a member Patreon or on YouTube today, we have our Q and a, so we'll be uh, bouncing out of this and going over to our Q and a and talking shop.
And so that's going to be it. You guys keep that powder dry and stay frosty because things, they are changing rapidly. All right. God bless. Monkey out. Check out the latest gear and products at monkeyworksus.com.